Hello, and welcome back to the channel, where we like to dive deep on some of John Deere's inventions and some of the coolest machinery they produced throughout the years. Today, we got a topic of some older loaders. We're going to be focusing on some of John Deere's earliest designs and working our way all the way up to the Model 45. Now, finding some information on some of these older loaders was quite a challenge, and I learned quite a bit myself. So let's dive into this and look at what John Deere had for some of their beginning loaders. The first manure spreader was invented in 1875 by a man with the name of Joseph Oppenheim. And the main way farmers loaded these was via pitchfork until around the 30s. And John Deere finally decided to get on board in late 39, releasing the number 26 rear mounted loader. And this is a very different loader from what we know today. Using pulleys and cables, it operated a boom with a small manure bucket on it for helping you load manure into the spreader. These loaders could be mounted on A's, B's, and G tractors, but the A's and B's required a box in the front that would counter the weight for travel. John Deere's claim was this could replace five men scooping with pitchforks. By the end of the 40s, people could see disadvantages in this design and decided to make a front push type loader. And that came in 1947 with the release of the Model 25. And a big advantage to mounting the loader to the front that's often overlooked is a lot of small farmers only had one tractor. And now they could use the tractor on the spreader and load it. This loader still used pulleys and cables, but it ran off the flywheel, which was powered through a foot-operated clutch. This loader had a trip bucket on it, which was operated by a rope, if you can believe it or not. The maximum capacity was around 850 pounds, but featured a safety that would let the clutch slip at 1500 pounds and to not overload the system and cause damage. With the main purpose of this loader being for scooping manure, it also featured a snow bucket, which was 60 inches wide that slid right over top of the manure forks. They also offered a straight blade that can be controlled from the seat of the tractor, giving the operator the ability to tilt the blade to one side or another. Moving on, it was also in 1947 where John Deere decided to release its first hydraulic loader. Now this was the Model 30 loader, but it was only mounted on the M tractors this was around the time John Deere first came out with their live power, putting it on tractors. And this made it very nice for controlling the loader. For those who don't know what live power is, it gives the operator the availability to run hydraulics anytime the tractor is running. Most loaders that were released at that time had single acting cylinders on it, which means the oil flows to one side, pushing it up, and vents as it's coming down. Now this is where this Model 30 gets a little unique, because it actually had double acting cylinders, which mean pressure can go to both sides of the piston. Based off pictures you can see of this loader, when the loader is all the way down, the cylinders are extended, which means it pulls on the cylinders to lift the loader up. This loader also offered the availability of a snow bucket, along with a reduced size snow bucket, a push blade, and fun fact is this was the first loader that John Deere released that it was available to get pallet forks for it. And it really seems like this is the loader where John Deere started going in the right direction. Moving on to the 1950s, John Deere would need to release a loader that would fit its newly released 50s, 60s, and 70s. And this loader would be the Model 45. This loader would be completely redesigned from previous models, giving you the size that you needed for bigger tractors while still using hydraulics. The main focus for farm loaders still in that time was moving manure, and that's where the John Deere 45 would do a good job. John Deere would build this loader not only to fit their newer tractors, but also the A's, B's, and G's. It would feature two single acting cylinders along with a trip bucket. Some of the later model 45's featured a hydraulic tilt bucket, but these are a little bit more rare today. The 45 loader featured its main bucket which had forks coming out for moving manure. It also featured a snow bucket attachment, which would slide right over the forks, giving you a big size bucket. Along with the snow bucket, you could also get a half bucket attachment, which just went to the edges of the loader. These 45s also featured a push blade for attachment, but this would require removing the bucket to attach it. It also featured one of my favorites, which is a crane. I've personally never seen one of these cranes, but I would love to buy one. The Model 45 loader could be tied into the hydraulic systems on your tractor. 
but a lot of people these days have mounted exterior reservoirs and their own PTO pump. The Model 45 loader would be one of John Deere's longest running loaders. It would feature a nearly identical design up through the run to finish off the two cylinders, going on to even some of the early 3010s and 4010s. One small thing they changed around the time of the 3010s on the 45 loader was turning the trip bucket lever to the inside instead of it going to the outside. Some people say these loaders are hard to run because most of the tractors they're on have a hand clutch, hand throttle, and a hand trip. But a little time and experience and you'll be operating it like a pro. Another small detail about these loaders is the mounts are a little bit offset. Now this is due to get your loader past your clutch side of your tractor. With this loader being the most used loader on John Deere two cylinders, I want to know if you've ever ran this loader or operated a trip bucket and what you've thought of it. Or if you've ran any of the previous loaders we've talked about. Anyways guys, I want to thank you for watching this introduction to some of the early John Deere loaders and we'll catch you in the next video.